Good morning everyone, welcome back to another vlog and welcome back to the bush. For those of you um, that kind of missed out why I'm here, go check out my previous YouTube video, it explains uh, how we got here and what we're doing here. I kind of touched on it briefly on an Instagram post that I was feeling so incredibly guilty for being in such a beautiful place and being able to enjoy such a beautiful place with a lot more freedom compared to people in the city or if we happen to stay at home in our uh, apartment in Cape Town um, and I kind of laid off creating any content because yeah I just felt a little bit weird about it um, but in light of that I posted a few Instagram stories and I got an array of such positive responses from a lot of you guys saying keep the bush content coming um, you know it's kind of taking us back to for those of you that have been on safari there were a couple of responses saying that oh, this camera's heavy saying that um, yeah it, it makes you reminisce about being back in the bush and for those of you that haven't that you were enjoying kind of getting a virtual piece of nature from your living room in light of that we have decided to come out on a little drive this morning we are currently in a private uh, reserve blaze family's got a house on here um so yeah we have a lot more freedom and flexibility to put things into perspective this is a big five reserve so there is big five kind of roaming about um and we are just opposite the kruger national park so yeah kind of in safari territory and we've been seeing that a lot of the lodges they've had a camera along in their vehicles and yeah kind of going through the normal morning and evening game drives as if one was on safari and then editing these videos and putting them online um, so people can kind of join in and learn more about the animals obviously this isn't the sabi sands so there's no leopards kind of everywhere when you turn every corner um, there's a lot less of the big game but we have a lot of plains game here uh, antelope zebra giraffe so yeah i thought we'd take you on a little drive and see what we stumble across whatever we come across uh, between blair and i will try best explain some fun facts about the animals try get some nice shots and yeah thought we'd make the most of this uh, situation and try and bring you guys along with us Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Not too bad. The bush is at least a good place to to be when you're filming vlogs. So when you go off and shoot your scenes like in bird watch and just chill out. Yeah, I was just explaining how we're gonna do kind of how the lodges have been doing. A mini virtual safari. Oh, are we? Yeah, we chatted about this. <laughs> I don't know if we did, but okay. Um Blair's not so keen to impart all of his bush wisdom, so I'm, I'm going to have a crack at imparting some of my knowledge, or limited knowledge. Yeah, let's see if you've been listening to what I've been teaching you. So, we'll see, see what we come across. For those of you that might be interested in joining along on a proper virtual safari where uh, yeah, there's a camera mounted on the back of game drive vehicles, there's a few lodges doing it at the moment. One of our favorite uh, stay-at-home safaris at the moment is from a spot called Savannah Private Game Reserve. They're located in the Sabi Sands. On their game drives, they're encountering things like lion, leopard, elephant, everything. So I will link their YouTube channel down below. I think they're uploading in the evenings once a day. So go check it out. So we've just come across um, two rhinos in the road, but more important than that, we are about to hear what Nicole has to say about them. Thank you, Blair. Thank you for handing the baton over. <laughs> These are two white rhinos. It's a mother and her calf. You might notice that they've been uh, dehorned. This is obviously in light of. Um, the poaching for rhino horn that's going on. Um, so in this reserve they do do uh, horn trimmings every now and then. 
there are two types, the white and black rhino. The main difference being that white rhino you'll generally find in like open areas, uh, whereas black rhino prefer more covered like thickets as opposed to grasslands. Um, they're a lot harder to see, a lot more conspicuous, inconspicuous, conspicuous, inconspicuous, inconspicuous. Um, but the size difference between a white and black rhino is probably one of the biggest telltale signs. A white rhino being a fully grown white rhino being a lot, lot bigger than a, a black rhino, and a white rhino will also have a square lip as opposed to the black rhino, which almost has a hooked lip. When you say hooked, you mean like a nice pointy... A pointy, yeah, yeah. a pointy bottom lip. Okay. Um, yeah, I think the name difference, it was believed that um, they were two different colours, but that theory is not relevant. They are the same colour. The misnomer with, um, with white rhino came about because the early Afrikaans name for rhino was um, a veit. W-Y-D meaning wide and they were referring to the the mouth um, and that vape then just got yeah directly translated by the English into white which was obviously incorrect and then obviously the opposite of white was black I don't know how they got to that assumption but it's got nothing to do with the color but there you can see the little youngster quite nicely Okay, so this tree on the left here, I mean on the right here, is quite an important tree for anyone who's lived and worked in the bush. It's called the African wattle or Peltiforum africanum. That's its scientific name. But its common name to those, like I said, who've worked in the bush is the toilet paper tree. You can see it's got these very, very soft like little uh, leaflets and if you take a good clump of it, uh, you can obviously use it to do your business. You can have one, two or three ply, or as many plies as you want. But uh, you've got to be careful. There's a tree that looks very, very similar to this called the common hookthorn. And uh, the common hookthorn along the base here has small little recurved thorns, which obviously won't be too pleasant when doing your business. Okay, what's next? Okay, so we came across a herd of impala, but uh, that's not why we've stopped. We've stopped because of something much more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> the magic quarry tree. It's not all about the big and hairies in the bush. It's Sometimes it's nice, nice to learn about the, the, the plants and the small little things. So exactly. What you got for us? Um, so yeah, this is for the magic quarry bush. Uh, it's Latin name being Euclea divinorum um, and a lot of these bushes and trees that we find out here obviously um, people have been living off this land for ages and a lot of these different trees have numerous different uses. This tree however is uh, great for making a toothbrush out of. Don't worry guys there are millions of these trees everywhere I mean, While I'm trying to um, get this branch off, a way to recognize the magic quarry is by its unique leaves. Uh, they look like someone's scrunched them up. So they're all curled around the edges, um, and that's a unique feature of this tree. All shriveled. Shriveled, yeah. So you peel away the bark, this outer layer, and you're kind of left with this very fibrousy looking interior, which kind of makes for a good toothbrush. Luckily for me, I've already brushed my teeth this morning. No, 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 you got to so give I an example. <laughs> you got to chew though. Yeah. Nine out of 10 dentists recommend the Magic Quarry over Oral-B. Leaf in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course, your toothpaste can be charcoal from your fire the previous night. 
Okay. And then you soma just polish. You missed the spot. <laughs> it's a very big toothbrush. Jeez. This is the thumbnail. What we got? There's some leopard tracks. There, it's very faint, but down here in the softer sand you can see it much clearer. Oh, that's very clear. And how do we know that it's a leopard as opposed to lion or So the size else? mainly. Um, I mean, that's, that's the front paw. And then the back paw kind of walks just, just over it when it um, does that. But it's the size. I mean, that's probably 10 centimeters, 7, 8 centimeters. That's, that's leopard. And you also look at the, you look at the gait. So the animal's about that wide across from track to track, which would be more leopard than lion. I mean, you sometimes can confuse leopard for like juvenile lions. But then there would usually be. But then you'd usually see yeah, a lot more, a lot more tracks. But no, this this is this is leopard. Yeah. You um, also tell the difference between le or, or cats and dogs by the by the back pads. You can see it's got that that and that three lobes whereas the dog has two cats also don't have claws they've got retractable claws so you generally don't see them in the in the track unless they they're running then the, the claws sometimes show in the tracks um, obviously the exception being cheetah which don't have retractable claws but yeah nice leopard stumbled across yet another interesting sighting. Um, <laughs> I would say just as interesting as seeing a lion or leopard. <laughs> but um, You can tell we've seen nothing on this game. <laughs> oh, we saw a rhino. We, did, we did, we did see a rhino. So this over here, you will see it's quite a odd color of poop compared to the rest of poop that you find in the bush. Um, and this white scat uh, belongs to the spotted hyena. The reason for the white color is that there's a high calcium content um, in the hyena's diet. They will often chew on bones from carcasses um, and digest that and in turn poop it out. Um, so yeah, that's the reason for, for the white scat. Lion scat can also go white if they um, have been eating bones, if they eat a, a smaller prey animal which they you know, eat the bones as well. But with hyena scat, if you, if you stomp on it, it breaks up and goes very, very powdery and chalky. That's because hyena yeah. are able to actually break up all of the small bone particles. So that's a really cool sighting because we were at this dam a couple of days back and there were no hippos in here and today we have stumbled across a bloat of hippos. As we kind of stopped the car and pulled up, all three of them went underwater and came towards us. Uh, hippos are extremely territorial. In fact, uh, they kill the most number of people in Africa out of all the wild animals. Um, and yeah, you definitely don't want to get in between a hippo and water because you will be mowed down. Uh, they can reach speeds on land of up to 36 kilometers, so they're pretty speedy, um, although they are extremely Despite big. their appearance. <laughs> yeah, they are massive, especially these big bulls. I think a lot of people think that hippos swim. They actually don't. They walk along the bottom of the floor of the river or of the dam or whatever it is. Um, and they do that by creating negative buoyancy. So they expel all of their air and they sink to the bottom and they walk along. They can stay underwater for up to five to six minutes. Uh, obviously the baby is a little bit less.
I think it's time to head back and get some grub. Thus ends our first mini <laughs> baby virtual safari. Um, I didn't want to drag this one on for too long because this isn't a safari channel. But if you guys did enjoy us, let us know. We're going to be here for some time still, uh, at least another week. So yeah, we have time to film another, maybe a longer virtual safari episode. Uh, let us know. Yeah. We need to see more sightings. We need to see. Well, we saw rhino. No, I like the small stuff. Yeah. We're not going to see the big and hairies on this uh, property. So. She says after seeing a leopard the other night and yes. hearing lions all around the house the last couple of nights. That is true. That is true. <laughs> but chances of seeing them are, are quite slim. We hear stuff often. Cool. Perfect. See you later. See you later.